The Electoral Commission says its October 10th letter to the parties on printing ballot papers was misconstrued. Now tonight, we delve further into the matter with the parties involved. This is Ghana tonight. Now, the Electoral Commission is beating a hasty retreat on printing of ballot papers. In a statement in the early hours of today, the Commission denied ballot papers uh, are being printed. Uh, it read, that statement I mean, that printing of notices of polls for the 2024 presidential and parliamentary elections uh, begins on Friday, October 11, 2024. Now, you notice uh, that it said the notice of poll is, will be printed on February 11th, 2024. As has always been the case, it goes on to say, the commission will... And if you could see that on the screen, could you see that on the screen just a little bit uh, so our viewers can go along with us? Um, clearly, it says that as it has always been the case, they will provide the political parties uh, with the election statistics before... Uh, the ballot papers are printed. So now the question you may be asking is, what well, was misconstrued? Um, where are we going with this? Now I'll tell you, because I've got you covered always. On 10th October, the commission released a statement which announced uh, the printing of notice of poll and ballot papers. It then encouraged candidates and political parties to make their agents available for training before the exercise took place. Now, shortly after that, the NDC issued its own statement questioning why the commission was printing ballot papers before parties received a certified copy of the voter register. I want to show you, you know, bits and pieces of that. Uh, no, we've already seen this. Uh, let's move past that. Let's see the, electro the NDC's um, response to the Electoral Commission's initial uh, you know, notice to them that they were going to do some printing. Now, in that uh, statement to the public, and by extension the Electoral Commission, the NDC had indicated that it was important that ballot statistics were provided to the candidates and political parties in that they needed to know, know and see the certified copy of the a voter register before the printing was done. Then clarification would follow from the Electoral Commission. And I want to show you a bit of that as well, which is what you see on your screens. The Electoral Commission will write later to say that notices of polls will be printed starting Friday, 11th October. And again, you notice that it doesn't talk about ballot papers in this clarification notice. It says ballot statistics will be provided to candidates, political parties, and printing houses before ballot paper printing begins. The commission then goes on to assure that stakehold, stakeholders, really, that transparency and fairness will be upheld in the printing process. Now, tonight, uh, the commission uh, has said that what it announced earlier was only for notice of poll, like you have, in the, you, you have seen. Now, I know that attempts for an interview with the commission today has not been successful, but I'm also learning, I'm also learning that the Electoral Commission says in the coming days it will speak a bit more on this issue. It will speak a bit more on the notice for printing the ballot. It will speak a bit more on all that has been going on as far as it beating this hasty retreat is concerned. But let's find out from those who have called to question that initial statement and the developments that have followed up since then. Mustafa Gwandi is Deputy General Secretary of the NDC. He's joining us for a bit more on this. Mustafa, good evening to you. Uh, the Electoral Commission's clarification to the earlier notice to uh, parties like yourself has now come out. I've read extensively and multiple times what they have said. What are your thoughts? Thank you very much and good evening to our cherished listeners. Indeed, it beats everybody's or everyone's imagination 
why the commission will write a letter to political parties on one subject, then come back to say that that is not what it intended to say. Clearly, this is a commission that wrote that it was going to begin printing of ballot papers, only to come back and say that it was rather talking about notice of pools. This error, deliberate kind of mistake, uh, is what we talk about every day that has the tendency to jeopardize the credibility of the Electoral Commission. As much as possible, we believe that the Electoral Commission is not making errors, but orchestrating and preparing to undermine the 2024 election. And that is worrying. Mm -hmm. It is also because... Mustafa, how is that? I mean, uh, the Electoral Commission uh, made that announcement to you, political parties. We reported on that. Uh, you attended, you, you sent representatives to attend that uh, orientation before the notice of poll uh, was printed. Obviously, there were engagements at that meeting, were, were there not? Like I said, after the Electoral Commission wrote that letter, we attended a meeting mm -hmm. where the political parties disagreed with what the commission intended to do. Of course, issues of uh, voter statistics or ballot statistics came in. And so for me, for the electoral commission to write a letter stating very emphatic that is embarking on one exercise, knowing the fatal unacceptability of that letter to the grounds that one, we have not finished cleaning the voters register. And I can tell you on authority, administratively, the Electoral Commission is not ready. The Electoral Commission around its regions have not finished cleaning all the mistakes and errors that the political parties have pointed out mm -hmm. as far as discrepancies in the 2024 election uh, voters register is concerned. And I dare the commission to stay otherwise. They are not ready. They have not been able to rectify all the problems yet. And I'm telling you that on authority. And so to proceed on such a fictitious exercise will only leave all Ghanaians wondering what the motive of the commission will be. It is also because the Ghanaian Republic have allowed the commission to go away with a lot of things. We have become talkatives. We have become complainants, even in the face of illegalities and an attempt to undermine the democracy of this country. Uh, but as what, what as can the Ghanaian people, I mean, what can the public do outside of Jin speaking Mensa up? Is not, Jin, Jin Mensa is not the first public servant proven to be incompetent, proven to be capricious, proven to be compromised, proven to be incapable of managing and delivering a credible election for the people of Ghana. It is, if it is, we miss elections... I mean, we how, missed... how, do you, how do you come to th those conclusions, uh, Mustafa? Well, you, you are aware that at her own management, she couldn't manage this assembly elections. At her own authority, people entered the premises of the commission and theft was embarked upon. You are aware. Well, most, most of what, I mean, I, I, the Electoral Commission chairperson is not here to respond to you, but we also know that, yes, they have admitted to some of the mistakes that they have made and given us assurances well, think... in the past that they are doing better, uh, to particularly to ensure that the upcoming polls are free, fair, and, and credible. A, a better effort is not when you write letters as if, excuse my language, when you were writing, you were writing it out of your mind. They wrote this letter. They were testing the vigilance of political parties and the people of Ghana so that if we don't raise concerns, they would have proceeded to fraudulently print ballot papers, which they know is wrong. Because on what I premise see. are you sort of printing ballot papers when we don't know the number of people who are going to cast their votes Indeed. in the 2024. Most of I want to take you a few steps back when you say that the Electoral Commission 
you know on authority that the Electoral Commission is not ready with some of the districts uh, across the country. But you might also be aware that uh, they have announced uh, some uh, over 40,000, nearly 41,000 polling stations for the elections ahead. How do you draw the conclusion that they are not ready when they have announced the polling stations, that the number of polling stations that they will need for the elections? Look, when we had the last, the last two IPAC meetings, okay, the Electoral Commission debated on a lot, number of things, including accepting the fact that there were discrepancies and that they were going to correct those discrepancies. Okay? Fast forward, the Electoral Commission came up with uh, this excuse of the fact that even in as much as we're waiting for that cleanup to be done, they were proceeding on a particular exercise. But I can tell you that as we are speaking today, 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 the Electoral Commission of Ghana have not been able to resolve all the issues we raised I in see. that IPAC meeting. To the extent that if you have resolved those issues, political parties should be having copies of the provisional voters register. Very well. This is the commission that gave a promise that it was going to deliver provisional voters register within a number of weeks, only to come back and say that it didn't give a promise of a week. And, 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 and what has been said to... about that now uh, at this stage? What is the electoral commission it, telling it, parties like it yours? Only means, it only means that... Like I said, it confirms that the Electoral Commission is not ready. And so as we speak today, you remember some of the corrections were one. Issues of padding of numbers, transfer of individuals, we do not know where they came from. Some constituencies, they had transferred well, data. Most of that, you see, the, the issues you're raising now were dealt mm. with uh, during that live streaming you know, event at the Electoral yes. Commission offices. I want us to move yes. ahead of that. They said some corrections yes. had been done, some were being done, some were yet to be done. I want to know from you, being a stakeholder in the electoral uh, process, uh, more, more, more so a, a, you know, a, a closer uh, stakeholder in the process, whether or not there has been official communication as to when you receive this uh, uh, PVR, the Provisional Voter Register. The Electoral Commission is running away this issue. They are running after these issues. Last three days or two days ago, surprisingly to everybody, the Electoral Commission for the first time brings out a video and saying that it didn't promise that within a certain number of weeks, it was going to deliver the provisional register after the corrections. Mm -hmm. What it means is that as we stand today and as we speak this evening, the Electoral Commission have not communicated to any of the stakeholders about whatever has been done or what have not been done. I see. So we still have the discrepancies intact as far as I'm concerned. Very We're well. still aware that even out of uh, uh, Graveman, or if you call it whistleblowers, the Electoral Commission have not been able to resolve all the issues we have identified, which they have accepted. Mm. And so why the right to proceed in even printing ballot, uh, 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 what do they call but whatever he's going to do in terms of whether he was going to print ballot papers or he was going to print notice of pools, why don't we concentrate on ensuring that, first and foremost, we have a clean register, undisputable register, that will not bring conflict and disagreement Very in well. the election? Indeed, Mustafa, those, that is a question that the Electoral Commission hopefully will answer in the coming days. Thank you so much for talking to us. Mustafa Gbandi is Deputy General Secretary of the NDC. That's all we have time for on that subject. But you recall that I mentioned some 40,975 polling stations have been identified by the Electoral Commission where they hope that the general elections will be conducted. Of this number, uh, 328 are special voting centers. But how does this compare with previous elections? I want to show you what it looks like. Uh, we go as far back as the 2012 election where we had 26,000 polling centers for a voter roll of about 14.2 million voters. And this is why you can understand why the NDC is asking for uh, the certified voter register 
or what the Electoral Commission has termed as the ballot statistics before, you know, uh, print, printing is done. So for, uh, you know, a, a voter row or voter population of about 14.2 or 14.19 uh, million, there were 26,000 uh, polling stations back in 2012. In the 2016 election, when we had about, uh, you know, 15.9 million uh, voter population, we had 29,000 polling stations. In the 2020 election, our voter roll had gone up to about 17 million, uh, a little more than that. We had 33,367 polling, um, you know, stations across the country. In the year 2024, we do not know how many people are captured on the voter roll yet. You can understand why the conversation has been had already. The Electoral Commission is still working on the ballot statistics. However, it has announced that there will be over 40,000, um, you know, polling stations across the country. 40,647. Again, we're not done with the numbers. I want to show you something else, how this compares when it comes to money, right? So let's just look at the 2020 elections. That's against the 2024 elections. We've already established that 33,367 polling stations were used in the last elections, according to the Electoral Commission, really. Uh, this year, they are telling us, even before we know the size of our voter roll, that 40,647 polling stations will be used. Now, the total funds allocated for the 2020 elections with about 7,000 less polling stations, was 701 million cities. This year, the Electoral Commission is looking to spend some 786.9 million on all these 40,000 40, plus polling stations. Allocation per polling station we are projecting will be about 19,359. That's against the 21,000 of uh, the 2020 election. Do the math. More money, or excuse me, less money in the 2020 election, but fewer polling stations. And that's why the allocations per polling st station appears to be higher than that of the 2024 election. You flip the coin, in the 2024 election, the projection is that we'll spend some $786.9 million on, on, our election, on our elections. Obviously, much more uh, than the $701 million in the previous election. However, we have more polling stations as announced by the Electoral Commission over 7,000 more. And so we are spending about 19,359 cities per polling station. It doesn't mean we are spending more, you know, less on the elections. We really are spending more on the elections, just a little bit more on the elections. But that's the point of discussion now. I'm going to bring in Mark Ewuzi, who is with Election Watch Ghana, but he's also the national youth organizer for the PNC. Uh, Mark, two conversations in one. Let's start off with what we've just, uh, you know, listened to. The number of polling stations, we do not have the voter roll yet. Uh, the, at least for now, we don't have a certified uh, PVR, let alone a certified uh, uh, voter roll. Yet our numbers are coming out. Your thoughts on happening so far? Let me, let me say a very good evening to you and to our cherished and viewers. Just as you ask the question, um, we have over 40,975 polling stations, yet we don't have a certified PVR. And so you ask yourself that, is the Electoral Commission very ready for the 2024 general elections? It is certainly no. And if we are saying yes, then it means that the Electoral Commission certainly has an agenda behind. I think the Electoral Commission has become an extension of a political party that has every structure that every political party is expected to have. They have a communication bureau, they have organizers, both youth, women, national chairman, and they have their vice chairman. Mark, what are you talking so, about? The Electoral yes, Commission is the elections the election management body of this country. The they cannot be an extension become, of any political party. I mean, let's stick that to the is issues. What the that is what the Electoral Commission has become. Now, if we are going back to the questions you asked, where well, we have over 40,975 polling um, stations, you ask that where is the register that made us got these number of polling stations that people are going to cast their votes? I know that we just opposed the number of people who are expected to vote 
to the number of polling stations that we have. Unfortunately, today, this is what the Electoral Commission is giving to us. And you'll be surprised that this was posted on the IPAC platform of the political parties. It was not even presented to IPAC members to discuss. And so you ask yourself that what is what at all is the Electoral Commission up to? I think that the Electoral Commission is only preparing the grounds for some political chaos in the 2024 general elections. And they must be very careful about mm, it. I see. Uh, and, and you know, I, I also want to pick your brain on the fact that uh, we know that, and, and again, this may not be an exercise that the PNC is a part of, but perhaps uh, pick your brain as, you know, Election Watch Ghana. It, it, once again, the election, Electoral Commission is beating a retreat on something that it has said uh, you know, in in, this, in a previous communication with the parties and candidates, it said, "Listen, we're doing uh, printing of notice of polling or poll, and the uh, ballot papers." It turns around to say, "No, uh, you know, is this a genuine mistake that we can forgive the electoral commission for?" Or as Mr. Fagbandi had indicated earlier, it is a deliberate attempt to hoodwink some of you. Kemini, the electoral commission currently have become a laughing stock where all meaningful Ghanaians are currently laughing at the Electoral Commission because of its conduct. That is why I earlier on in my submission said that the Electoral Commission is now behaving like an extension of a political party but, where but, they commit mistakes and errors and come back to say that they are sorry for what they have done. Kemini, we cannot have an Electoral Commission as an independent arbiter who will conduct itself in this manner. There is no way on earth that an independent Electoral Commission that has every state resources and mandated to conduct an independent election without any favor for any political party to commit errors and think that we can forgive it. If it is so, then the People's National Convention's mistakes and errors it committed ought to be forgiven. Let me not cast your mind so back. I think In the Sitala constituency, the Electoral Commission had committed an error even in their notice of post and then the, the materials they are printing, and you think that this thing should be forgiven. Mm. Come in. Electoral Commission's commitment of errors will, will push this country into chaos, and we cannot forgive it. I see. It is uh, impossible it, to forgive such errors. Very well. So Just let us be very careful and caution the Electoral Commission. We are calling on all meaningful Ghanaians, including leaders of our country, to call the Electoral Commission to order that whatever it is embarking on will only plunge the country into chaos and political civil crime, mm. which they might be very careful about. Very well. Now, just quickly, on your, uh, you know, your flag bearer, who did not make the cuts this time in the elections, as we see things are moving fast, we know that the matter, uh, he told us, will go to court or is in court. But at this rate, he's been disqualified, hasn't been he? I mean, he's not going to make the cut at all. He's not stopping the process. Kamini, we were in court on Monday. And if you take a careful look at the, the summons from the court, we are telling the Electoral Commission to stay put on all its activities until the case in court is resolved. Unfortunately, the Electoral Commission have decided to continue the processes despite the fact that the People's National Convention's leader and flag bearer, Mr. Bernard Mona, is asking them to stay put, not from his own volition, but from that of the court. It tells you how the Electoral Commission wants to behave, that it is taking all of us for granted. It is not trying to, you know, respect the, 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 the rules of the court, but I've decided that let me go ahead because I have some backings from the government. I think the Electoral Commission is trending on a wrong path, and it must be very careful about that. You know also that on Monday, when we went to court, the Electoral Commission clandestinely decided not to file a response to the 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 the, 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 the writ that we have filed in court. Mm -hmm. And it tells you the orchestration by the Electoral Commission to frustrate the People's National Convention's leader and flag bearer, Bernard Mona, just so that he will give up. But I am telling you on this platform that we will not be shaked. We are not protected. Very we will well. ensure that the People's National Convention is represented 
And maybe it is because Bernard Mona is putting up some policies that will break the deal fully. Mark, that is why the Electoral Commission, led by Madam Jane Mensa, is opposing the candidature of Mr. Bernard Mona. Mark, there's much more to talk about. Unfortunately, this is all we have time for. Uh, Mark Ewuzi Ako is with Election Watch Ghana. He's also the national youth organizer for the PNC reason. We've been talking about issues around the PNC. You're watching Ghana tonight. Still to come. The men in white cloaks have prayed for the land. Will it change anything? That's coming up as the fight against illegal and unethical mining continues. The fight against Galamse is unabated. Tonight, we are learning that President Takufuadu will address the nation in the coming days on this menace. This came to light earlier today when scores of priests clad in their white cloaks marched the streets of Accra, praying for action and an end to illegal and unethical mining in this country. Now, they were supported by hundreds of Catholic faithful chanting their rosaries like you saw there for Ghana's rivers, forests, and land to be restored. Tonight, TV3's Crosby Annan reports that the atmosphere was serene yet purposeful. We are facing it today, but how about their future children? What are they going to do? Can they live on it or what? So that's my problem. That's, mm, the, the, in fact, the leaders should, 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 should see to it. Those who, are, those who are passing Ghana, they have gone. But those present Ghana, they should do something to it. Because our future may be your children, my children, children, children. What, do, what, they, what, they, are, they, what they, are they coming to live on? The Ghana say that is going on right now is destroying our waters and all those kind of stuff. And in the nearest future, we the youth, we are going to be in the most trouble, the most need of water. So doing this is, is, is a way of showing our interest in the country. We all want to help so that they will stop that thing they call Galamsey or that. Now, after, after the four-hour walk, the praying priests and their supporters presented a petition to the president, which was received by the deputy chief of staff, Emmanuel Ejiamwa Bosman. We brought to the fore the dimension that we hardly talk about in this, in this matter. The good book tells us in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14, it says that if there are my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear them from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and this is what I like, and heal their land. The spiritual aspect of healing our land comes from adhering to these four principles. And I assure Every now and then, you've got to preach to the converted. Now, the prayer practice has received wide admi admiration from Christians around the country, including uh, Cardinal Peter Pia Texan in a student uh, interview on hot issues. He told me the prayer must be backed by action. Take a listen. Prayer, what we need now. In place of force, when you want to have somebody do something which is not used to doing, you either persuade or you force him. Okay, and when they talk about prayer, then they talk about the, this other option of persuading or helping somebody to see something. So that's what, you, if you don't want to force the person, mm -hmm. then you just pray for a conversion, change of mind or whatever, and that's what prayer does. Mm -hmm. So in this regard, from our own office, okay, uh, which used to promote yes. this document and ecology, travel all the world over to talk about this, that's what, that's what you find, you know, a lot of people, First, do not believe that there's really the need uh -huh. for this concern or are not convinced about it. So some true arguments, you can get to them to see the point. But some also who are, not, who are adamant, 
sometimes you know you just have to just pray for them. Mm. That they, they, they see. So prayer, that's I mean, for Christians you don't have any powerful way of doing anything beside prayer. Mm. I mean, I was going to ask if the church could do much more than prayer. Like what? Okay, apart from prayer, mm -hmm. oh, it will be to back your prayer mm -hmm. with concrete initiatives. Mm -hmm. For example, so you do your march, and then let's say you decide to put some acres outside uh, Accra right. on the trees, and you do a tree planting campaign and all of that. Mm -hmm. By the way, you know, something of this has always been there. I mean, you know, uh, as a child growing up in school, I remember that the first days of June, we used to be referred to as Abba Day, uh -huh. the day of the week. And that was just, I think this is from colonial or whatever, and it's a day that encouraged planting of trees. So that culture has been there, it's been overlooked, but I think beside prayer, bishops and local churches can take a concrete project of putting some space of land on the trees. Well, there's more on this because I told you earlier, we're hearing from the police one of you know, the only suspect who is still in their custody. But tonight, we had her voice from behind bus, and right now, she will tell her story in her own voice and to our, our faces. I've got the details for you right now. Well, I thought something was going to roll, but since nothing rolled... Let's move on. It's been now three weeks since some protesters were arrested by the police when they hit the streets of Accra to demand action from government. The end Galanze now protest ended with about 54 of them in prison and police custody. Among those arrested is the woman we'll be talking to in a little bit, Felicity Nelson, a key convener of the protest. After facing detention, she and others have been granted bail and shortly we should be able to speak to Felicity. In the meantime, we are getting new information from the police. Uh, now, the police has released a statement debunking uh, reports or rumors uh, that suggest that they have had to take the only suspect now in custody, you know, the suspect on record in custody uh, because they could not provide medical assistance for him. They didn't have the money. So if you look at the first... Uh, point in that police statement we have seen in the last few hours. It says that the Ghana Police Service denies social media allegations that Oliver Baker Vomawo was returned to custody due to lack of funds for his medical expenses, labeling these claims as false and aimed at gaining public sympathy. Now that's interesting. It goes on to say that the police clarify that all medical costs for Bak Bakavoma was hospital visit were fully covered by the police service in accordance with their procedures for suspects in custody. And then there's the last one, where the police go into the fact that there was no emergency. Oliver Bakavoma was not rushed to the hospital as is being claimed. Now, a few things the police does not talk about, and one of them being the whereabouts of Oliver. Is Oliver still in the hospital? Is Oliver back in police custody? What is the state of Oliver at this point? Remember that 54 of them on record or are on record to have been arrested, right? However, uh, when all 53 of them or 54 of them were put before judges, uh, they, they were granted bill except for Oliver. Again, the judge's comment on that is that Oliver already has a case against him before, has had a case against him before, and for that matter, should be put back behind bars. Now, we will not go into the merit of that. What we are going into is, is this police statement and why it is coming at this time, why the police found it necessary, but however you know, left out details of the current state of the young man and where he is at the moment. Perhaps the police should release another statement to tell us a bit more on that. But that's the latest coming from the police in the last few hours. When we come back from this break, we'll talk to Felicity.
Felicity will be speaking to us for the first time since returning from that sabbatical in the Kula. Don't go away. Oh, welcome back. This is still Ghana tonight, and this evening we've been talking about a number of issues. We began with the Electoral Commission beating a retreat on that uh, announcement to begin printing of uh, notice of poll and ballot papers. We've also talked about the polling stations that are in the in the play or are in play for the 2024 uh, elections. We've heard from some, some stakeholders as far as the elections are concerned. We've not turned attention to Galamsi. I told you earlier in the last few hours, the police has released another statement on the last, um, you, you know, protester on record in their custody. And some questions have been asked about the whereabouts of Oliver uh, Baka Voma. Well, on the back of the statement that the police you know, release regarding his health. Uh, we also arranged to speak to one of those who's been uh, freed on bail. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot bring you that interview today, and I apologize profusely uh, for that. So maybe we should turn attention to something else now. I want to speak with one of 13 presidential candidates on the, uh, you know, the voter roll this year. Uh, he's one of the few uh, independent candidates in the race, and he's joining me live on Zoom. His name is uh, George Chum Berima Edu. George, good evening to you, and thank you so much for joining us. Good evening, and, and good evening to your listeners. Sorry That's to fantastic. you. Fantastic. <laughs> it, 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 and it seems that, listen, each and every day we are moving closer. Today is 56 days to the December 7th elections. I want to know how your campaign is going. The campaign is going well according to our plan agenda. We have an agenda to execute. And that is all we are doing. We don't look at any other um, thing. It is a singular agenda. That is to ensure that on the December 7th, I am the one who qualifies under Article 63, Clause 3. Mm. Hello? Yeah, George, we can hear you. Hello? Uh, you said that y you're the one who qualifies. What does that mean? Under Article 63, Clause 3 of the Constitution, that determines who has qualified as president. Mm, I see. But why would the Ghanaian people want to choose you? And why would the Ghanaian people want to choose any other person but me? <laughs> I am coming with I am coming with an agenda and a program that is giving Ghanaians common prosperity. What we have so far is 32 years of failure of the two parties. It took China just 31 years to move from third world to first world. We've had 32 years of MP, NDC NPP and we've gone backwards. So there is no other option. We can't go back to what I called use breath and recycled breath. We need fresh breath. Mm. And, it's, and it's as simple as that. I see. Fresh breath. And you are the fresh breath, aren't you? Def definitely. I see. So this fresh breath, how will it handle what many have said is the difficulties of today, like the high cost of living that we all face today? How will this fresh blood, fresh breath deal with that? So if you look at what we are facing today, it's purely a deficit of our, of our development model. I keep saying that both the NDC and the MPP follow what I call a God model, a GOD, growth-oriented development model. And it does, it does nothing but all they seek is economic growth. Looking at data, macro macro data, micro data, and say that oh, we've grown by 6%, 2%. Meanwhile, the farmer is getting poorer and poorer every day. Until we tackle farming and we tackle industry, we will go nowhere with the growth. So what Ghana right now needs is a leader who will not only look at growth, but will also look at other issues in terms of human development. The farmer and, the, and Ghanaians who need the development, which is most needed in terms of Indeed. their welfare and their well-being and their, uh, what's it, 
what I call their pocket. Ah, I see. But George, I, I want to pick your brain again on some issues that have got to do with the electoral process itself, even as we talk about your campaign, right? Um, what communication have you received from the Electoral Commission uh, since the last gathered the parties and candidates at that uh, live streaming of IPAC? What communication have you received with regards to the provisional voter register? On the voter register, nothing so far. We, we've gotten, I think, three. One was, yes, I think yesterday, we were to let our... Um, Agents come and sign off the election rule, which um, we rejected, and we got one this morning or last night that we come today with the refs instead, which was done. And, and today also we got a list of the polling stations, but on the voter register, none so far. I see. Uh, George, just before I let you go, your voters may be watching us today. Just a quick word for them, and then we'll wrap up our conversation. I keep saying to, I want to say to all Ghanaians that this is a time for us to be bold. I mean, at the moment, there is no other option for Ghana but to be bold and do away with the, the two main parties that have let us down so, so badly these past 32 years. And like I said, we don't need used breath or recycled breath. We need fresh breath. And it's for Ghanaians to do that on December 7th and vote massively for George mm -hmm. Chumberema Edu. Thank you so much. Mm, I see, George. I'm so grateful you could talk to us tonight. Uh, this is the beginning of many more engagements to come. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, myself. George Chumberima Edu is an independent presidential candidate, and he says he's the fresh breath uh, that will come and change things for this country, and that's why he should be voted for. You're still here on Ghana tonight. I want to show you something. Be quiet. Take a look at this. Yes. Producer of Ghana Tonight. You may have seen him on uh, Manifesto Check. Um, Dennis Poiberi. Today he was called to the bar and we want to celebrate him. Well, hello, Dennis. Hi, Kim. <laughs> I'm sure you didn't know this was happening, but this was this is, this is a special one from the team to you. We are so proud of you. What does it feel oh. like to be a lawyer today? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's humbling. Um, I mean, it, it feels good too. And I'm particularly excited that you guys are celebrating me all the while. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate this. Indeed, indeed. And, and you know, viewers who have seen you on the screens and know the work that you do will be thinking, well, now that you've been called to the bar, it's either more, more insight into matters or perhaps they'll see you less and less of you. What should they expect from you, really? Well, um, we just continue from where we are. We try to get better at everything. There'll be more compelling content on Ghana tonight and other special productions that we work on. I think mean, collectively as a team, we can only achieve more and more if we push on. Indeed. And we appreciate you for that, Dennis. We see you in that expensive suit. Thank you so Thank much you. for talking so to much. us. <laughs> we'll, see you, we'll see you here on Monday, right? All right, sure. You All will. right. Have a pleasant weekend. Bye. <laughs> Dennis Poberi is our producer here on Ghana tonight. Like I said, you may have caught him on Manifesto Check, breaking down the numbers and comparing things. My understanding is he was asleep, but we had to sneak that one in. But quickly, speaking of sneaking in things, this is what you should expect 7 a.m. here on TV3 when Alfred Okanse, uh, you know, meets you and his panelists here on Key Points. It's a, it's a very long list of men who will be gathered here tomorrow to discuss the Galamsey menace and whether or not organized labor has betrayed the trust of its members. And then the thousands who protested uh, delay in approval of the anti-gay bill. So that's for key points. Also remember that on Sunday, I bring you that Hot Issues exclusive with Cardinal Peter Apia Texan.
we talk about all things this country, governance, leadership, uh, you know, the National Cathedral, the anti-gay bill, and uh, if a host of issues, including Galamsey and the protests. You know, you saw snippets of that. So make a date with me Sunday, 2 p.m. here uh, for Hot Issues. My name is Kemeni Amano. I'll see you same time Friday night. Have a pleasant weekend. Bye-bye.